Eight months have passed already since my last racing game chart video. Woo! Time flies! So, is the moment to update the chart, not only with new games, but also with games of the past. For those who watch this racing game chart for the very first time, please read the description, in that way you have an idea how you evaluate the games. And keep in mind, I don't evaluate modded games, just the original ones. Remember, this is just my modest opinion in more than 20 years of experience in racing games. So, this is how we left the chart 8 months ago. But before starting this 8th episode we must change the position of some games, because uh, during this month they got important improvements on several aspects. The first one is Freckfest. The game got a big update, which improved a lot the graphics, especially on PC. But the developers put also an effort on the tires mode as well to make it more realistic. Cars lose grip more naturally now. It's safe to say this game is a sim arcade racing game, and uh, no more an arcade. Of course, not at the same level of Gran Turismo 5 and 6 and Forza Motorsport 5 and 6 in terms of physics, but still good. And if you want my opinion, it's one of the most fun racing games you can buy today. I highly recommend it. The second game which deserves a change in the start is BMG. Like Breakfast, it got a great update on the graphics, which was the weakest point of this simulation. I hope the developers will continue updating this game, considering the game is in beta and in constant evolution since 2013. The third game which changes a little the position in my chart is more important, I racing. The damage model improved on some cars, especially on the body and deformation, and little improvements on the graphics are very good news for a game which was released in the far 2008. The fourth game to change its position is Racer Room. Little graphics adds, like sparks and particles effects, and better force feedback system are great and welcomed, especially for a game which you can buy for free. The fifth and final update is Air Factor 2, which, thanks to the huge graphics update, which uh, this game really needed since 2013, now it looks like a proper modern full simulation, a great contender for the other ones. And of course, let's imagine how good it should look with some graphical mode installed. So, after these 5 updates, let's see the new game of this video. Some people say this game is the same since World Rally Championship 8. They aren't so wrong, but hey, if you release a new game every year, is it legit to expect big changes on both graphics and physics? Of course not. So why do someone should spend a full price for a game which is almost identical to the previous one? Let's ask the same question to people who buy FIFA every year. <laughs> War Rally Championship 10 is a great game, like the previous chapters, and it offers more content, but it lacks in innovation, and this could penalize a bit its success, especially considering it has to fight against a more successful game like Dirt Rally 2. Best times are 
Sector 2. This is the last Formula 1 game made by the defunct Studio Liverpool. People had to wait until 2009 to play again an official Formula 1 game, this time made by Codemasters, but uh, it wasn't so good like this one, the Championship Edition. Anyway, this is another story. Formula 1 Championship Edition was almost a launch game of PlayStation 3, considering it was released one month later after the launch of the console. On the physics part, it was a classical sim arcade playable very well with controller. But uh, without driving assets, it could be very hard to stay on the track, even for a pro driver. This is confirmed also by the historical Formula 1 car, which you could unlock. Some of them were pretty hard to drive, especially those without downforce. Graphically speaking, if we compare it to the PlayStation 2 version, we can see the hardware upgrade it was tangible. I just don't get it, Zoe. Gets to pit ahead of me. And they give his car the only new power unit last season. And he gets to go out behind me in qualify. <sighs> this kid is a new number one. Another Formula One game, but this time it's the last one released a few months ago. Formula One 2021 suffers from the same problem of War Rally Championship 10. How to improve a game in just one year? How to justify the full price if the game is too similar to the one of the previous year? As I showed with you in my complete video review of the game, Formula One 2021 haven't changed a lot on the physics, but not because Codemasters can't make it more realistic, especially I'm talking about the TARS model, but because it's a pure choice of game design, to make it mo the game more accessible to a bigger mass of people, both pro sim racers and more casual people. It's a bit frustrating for hardcore sim racers, but I guess it's the right choice, commercially speaking. On the graphics part, we see the debut of the ray tracing, but uh, sorry if I'm ignorant, but uh, can you see an improvement here? <laughs> because I can't really see it. And uh, if you can notice the change, uh, you must admit it isn't so big. I hope Electronic Arts will give us a better new Formula 1 game next year. A great remake of the classic in high definition. Forget about physics because this game since 1986 the only goal is to overtake other cars in the coolest way as possible with your open Ferrari and a hot blonde girl at your side, kissing you if you drive fast or booing at you if you drive too slow. It's a simple arcade game, if you want to chill or relax. Graphically speaking was nothing special for 2006 standards, but people didn't care because uh, you buy this game just to feel the 80s vibes, which uh, I bet uh, a lot of you are missing. We finished this video with the biggest bomb, and probably the game which we were waiting for. Forza Horizon 5. What's the problem with this game? As I explained in my video review about it, with several elements examples, we can consider Forza Horizon 5 a sim arcade, but uh, it's a bit frustrating. Why? Because it could be more realistic on the physics part. At this point you will tell me, okay, it's the developer's choice. 
to make it more accessible for a larger amount of people. Otherwise, if it was too realistic, it would have been too hard. Okay, that's actually half true. But uh, as I told you a lot of times, realism isn't synonym of the difficulty. Moreover, instead of making a racing game more arcadish to please people who have little experience racing game, why don't help these people just with driving assist? I mean, putting driving assist to help people driving is better than making the whole game more arcadish, isn't it? For this reason, yeah, Forza Horizon 5 is the definitive racing game for a lot of reasons, especially for the content. But the arcadish tires handling prevented from being a true legendary simulation which could kill all its opponent of the racing game market. And that's even more frustrating, because graphically speaking we are very close to His Majesty's Drive Club, which since 2014 still remains the most beautiful racing game ever made, which still impresses me even today after all these years. So, this is the updated chart after the 8th episode. Don't worry, in the future I add new racing games, modern and from the past. Thanks for watching and see you in my next video!